Those are the two gentlemen trending in the Ghana, in Ghana at the moment, Stone Boy and Shatawali. Well, the latest information coming in is that police have retrieved uh, the gun that you may have seen in that video uh, on the stage on Saturday. Well, this afternoon, Shatawali and Stone Boy remain in police custody as they are investigated over Saturday's violence at the 2019 VGMA here in Accra. You'll be hearing this afternoon on the show from the families of the two. You hear from organizers of the ceremony and, of course, you hear from the police, which is investigating this matter. We we'll hear on them as, the, as to the updates so far. But first, let's bring you a wrap of that night that was meant to be a sweet night, but eventually went sour. A music festival it was expected to be, one to celebrate a 20-year journey of evolution of the Ghana Music Awards. The night began with subtle mockery of a new dome setting some described as a church. Nonetheless, it was all going well with several awards giving out as at midnight from Lifetime Achievement Awards handed to veteran gospel musicians Dr. Mary Gansa, Professor Kofi Abraham and High Life Grades of Boba J. A. Adolfo. Then the fiercely and keenly contested category awards. Shatawali's My Level was adjudged High Life Song of the Year. Hey, Shatawali. And then the big one, which triggered some spontaneous agitations in the dome, Reggae Dancehall Artist of a Year Award. A tense moment of uncovering the sealed envelope with camera lenses amplifying the emotions on the faces of the two nominees, Stone Boy and Shatawali. Finally, the announcement. Stone! Stone Boy prepares to hit the stage, gesticulating with his fingers. He had won the award five times. Before the Bokeke hitmaker could collect his award, violence erupted. Shatawali and people he describes as his militants also made their way up onto the stage amidst some pushing and shoving. At least some of the members from both camps were captured, exchanging blows. Amidst the confrontation on the stage, television visuals showed Stone Boy brandishing a gun from a pouch despite being restrained by his aides. From several accounts, pepper spray and other gases went up, causing some patrons to flee in a near stampede. Here, some eyewitnesses. But I think the fans misinterpreted everything. Shatawale went to stage for a brotherly love thing. You get it. This is Shatawale likes to um, come into the story every single time. So he wanted to go to stage to create a scene. Oh, okay. Now they gave the award to Stone Boy. And then me, Shatawale, I'm going to the stage to congratulate him. And I brought the riot. I, the main motive of Shatta going on stage was actually to go and congratulate him. But I think it was miscommunication. Eh? I stood up. Uh, so me, for instance, I blame the security. Yeah. Then he stood up, fight. I knew that he was going to fight. He, 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 he never went to no, 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 no. He never goes in a good fight. So, For nearly an hour, the VGMA was held up with security officials attempting to count tensions. Your seats now, we'll have no choice but to have the police make you take your seats. I don't have a choice, I'm sorry. We've embarrassed ourselves enough. The live show was off, and at this point, Stone Boy had received another award and had an explanation of a previous incident. <laughs> And then to Ghana, my upper Santo Qua and Eba. What did he say? Did this explanation do him any good? Well, he doesn't seem to think so Thank himself. You very much, Ghana. I mean, I'm really sorry for the incident that happened earlier on, and I only have to react out of natural instincts because we all know how premeditative some people can be. We've seen on social media the threats and everything, so we couldn't come in unprepared because anything could have happened like you guys saw. I come in peace and I'll go in peace and I apologize 
to the whole masses of Ghana. Maybe Samini's freestyle calmed the few traumatized patrons left in the auditorium for the show to restart. <laughs> But it will go on to an anti-climax. Some advertised performers will not mount the stage. Gospel artists over here, Dinah Hamilton, Stone Boy himself, Shatawale and others. And the crowning of the artist of the year as well as popular song of the year winner will be deferred until the press conference someday. Those two awards we'll talk about later in the press conference. Considering what has happened here tonight, very shameful, very embarrassing. We have decided that of the three awards we will drop two tonight, I will present the ultimate. At this time, social media was blazing, especially for traumatized patrons like Lydia Forsen. But rapper Sarkodie would go on to win their Seized of a Decade gong. I'm not a human, I'm a cat. Some say an event to remember for all the wrong reasons and others say one to forget if you are looking for a beautiful exhibition and celebration of great music. Police say one person has been arrested. Where do you stand for those who say it was a good night gone bad or, well, a bad night after all? Well, last night, Shatawale's father spoke to John Yusuf Kwesi Pakawel Singh explaining why he believes his son went onto that stage. Being detained, as a matter of fact, there's no nothing about it. He's been detained. So for what reason? Nothing. You don't know. But what it means is that he's spending the night at the police custody. Mm. That is the basic fact. Has he that written the statement? He has. He has, has he been charged? He has not been charged. He has not been charged. You don't think that he should be, be in detention as of this night? Cobra, if Stonebell pulled a gun, you can imagine a news headline. Stone Boy pulled a gun, Shatawale arrested. I, I don't know what the content of, of this particular... But both of them have been detained, that is the information. I mean, he, Shata, has been detained, Stone Boy uh, has been detained. That, detained. Is that, that doesn't function. Okay. Well, so, 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 is it legal from, from what we all saw last night? Mm -hmm. okay. Is it legal, as we stand here, for, for Shatta to be detained alongside Stone Boy? Based on the facts that he has turned out to the police. So that, that, that's your word against the word of the police. Mm. Well, uh, I don't know. Um, well, I, I, I told them, Gwen Blanga, they, they put the first one on us. Okay. Me as a father. Your, lawyer, if they, your lawyers were here. What are your lawyers saying about the detail? Well, we will certainly take the matter up after we are out of this mess. We will certainly take them out. And do you trust the police to do a good job of this one? Well, what other good job apart from the statement that we bring? We don't even know what um, charges they are going to prefer against us. We, we, we don't, Did we don't, Shatter I mean, have a gun yesterday? Shatter didn't have a gun yesterday. Did any of his boys have a gun or knife? Not that I saw. I never saw any of boys holding a gun or wielding one. I never saw anything you understand? Like that. Two shots were fired. Uh, Two where? Yeah. I was inside the auditorium. Right. Did you hear any shot fired? I never heard. Two shots fired. Well, from what I saw when Stoneboy, this guy, you know, passed on this gun, which Stoneboy is claiming was a toy gun. That is what he told the police. That the it was, was a toy gun. Uh, you, you read from, we watched the TV3 news. We watched it. It was not a toy. Now, do you have to? Somebody recently at Amazon, a guy used a toy gun to rob a woman. He went in for 36 years. So, for you as a father and, of course, a manager, part of the managing team, what are you going to do now, sir? Well, I, I, I mean, I'm the patient type. Uh, I'm not going to, I told the police, I don't know, but I am the patient type because I'm a long distance runner. I have, so I have a lot of patience when it comes to some of these things because legally um, we know what to do after this mess. We know what to do after this mess. And for you, how is this going to affect Shatawali's um, music career? <laughs> well, I, I see that as a GDP, 
as part of the GDP for Shatawale. Now, what is GDP about? Yeah. God's divine plan for Shatawale. I see this. What's happening is God's divine plan for Shatawale. Well, I tell you, because his popularity is going to soar. I won't hide that from you. See, when God is, you know, begins to weave a basket that you could use to fetch seawater from the shore, from the seashore, you'll be shocked that people will see you carrying the basket. And, and, and they will be wondering, Charlie, where from you, Kwabla? And Kwabla, I went to the seashore to fetch seawater. Oh, Kwabla, you swear, aren't you getting insane? Aren't you getting insane, Kwabla? How can you go to the seashore and fetch seawater with a basket? Well, that is God for you. There are those who say that what happened is a national embarrassment, a global embarrassment. What do you make of it? Now, listen carefully. Yesterday, I sat there quietly waiting for the next award if we should win one. To use that occasion to apologize globally. When I realized that Chairman General Kwame Zifakai came telling us that they had taken a decision that out of the three hours that were left, they were going to um, take one out and leave and postpone the two. That's a wow. So I immediately spoke to one of uh, the, the Vodafone ladies, I don't know her name, said, see, I want to make a statement on what happened a short while ago. And she was like, oh, please, too late. Um, and uh, it's too late. Uh, okay, all right. because I didn't want to mess up with them. I mean, this is Shatta Kapu. Uh, 24 know. hours of no statement from the Shatta Wale camp. Yeah. No apology, nothing. You are taking Ghanaians for a ride. You don't think that it is important to let Ghanaians understand or appreciate what happened yesterday? Well, um, I'll tell you what. I picked the two hours. Right. I was going to go to Shatta's residence to discuss the question you've posed. Mm. So we can come up with a solution. The, the awards are right in my card. Uh, that is uh, Charles Niyama, the father of Shatawali, speaking to Kwesi Paka Wilson last night. Well, police says it will be speaking to eyewitnesses as well as review the videos that have been on social me media, including this video. So there you have it, uh, the moment it all happened. So a group of people coming along with Shatawale storm the stage. And Storm Boy, who was at this time already on the stage getting his, his award, then pulls out a gun. Shatawale is seen in the video moving away at this point with his supporters following him. And in fact, one of them tries to hit the person who was filming, if you could see that. There is the moment it all started. And the blows began between the followers of Shatawali and Stone Boy. And a lot of people keep replaying the video like we have just done because they could not believe this happened. Well, the two persons involved were kept in police custody overnight. Maxwell Agbaba visited the Tesano and Dansoman police stations earlier this morning. 
I'm here at the Tessan um, police station. Uh, you remember yesterday, um, Charles Niyama Menson, popularly known as Chatawale, um, first announced his um, arrest on social media about sometime around 9.45 um, p.m. He announced to his followers um, and also made statements um, seemingly suggesting um, that he's facing some kind of injustice of assault. He said um, a gun was pointed at him and now he has also um, you know, been arrested. Well, um, he came back with another post on Facebook that was sometime around 9.54 p.m. Um, announcing that he was going to be sleeping here um, at the Tessano police station. He urged his fans to go live on Facebook and sing his songs till he returns. And we've been doing our checks here at the Tessano police station, and we are told that um, Charles Nyama Mensah Shatawale uh, was brought here um, briefly yesterday, but was taken to another location. Stone Boy is actually here at the Dansman police station and he is actually sitting in the room directly um, behind me where we have the uh, multi-tv um, decoder that happens to be the um, crime officer's office here um, at the Dansman police station um, we were upstairs some minutes ago uh, we saw him together with members of his uh, management team he's dressed in um, in a black shirt black trousers and then in a white um, shoe we saw his manager with him um, um, he's well known as Black CD. He was seated in a sofa in the office um, uh, of the um, crime officer. We also saw some management members um, standing outside on the corridor um, where he is right now. We approached um, one of the uh, team members to speak to them on what they make of Karen's, you know, happenings. Um, but he said he's not going to speak to us. He said the CEO himself has already um, issued a statement apologizing for what happened at the Accra International Conference Centre. The um, commander uh, of the um, Dansuman Divisional Headquarters here, he would also not give us any um, information. Um, he only told us to get in touch with the public relations officer of the um, Accra Region Police, um, Ifia Tenge. All right, Max Alagbaba there earlier this morning when he visited the Tesano and the Dansuman police stations. First, we understand that the uh, Shatawali was being held at Tesano police station, whereas Shatawali, um, whereas uh, Stoneboy was being held at uh, um, the Dansuman police station. But this afternoon, they're facing further questions and will be charged if any or both of them are found to have done anything unlawful. We'll be looking at what the law says about that particular incident and what the police can do in such situations. We'll also be discussing how to prevent such occurrences in the future when we're joined on the line by DJ Black and Secretary Safo. We also have our men at the Accra Central Police Station where the two men are being questioned as we speak. Well, first though, let's get to know who these two artists are and what has brought them to this point of what looks very much like an extreme rivalry. I'm going to start talking to you about who these gentlemen are by describing to you or talking to you about the awards that they've both had over the years. Let me begin with the year 2013. And the event was a Foresight TV Music Video Awards. And the prize was the most popular video. This is for Shatawali. In 2013, he won the Foresight TV Music Video Award for most popular video. And um, so you've seen some pictures there. These are quite latest. But along the line in 2014, the Nigeria Entertainment Awards, he came out as the African Artist of the Year. This was in 2014. He was the African Artist of the Year at the Nigeria Entertainment Awards. In 2014, again, at the Ghana Music Awards, he, he won the Reggae Dance Hall, uh, Reggae Slash Dance Hall Song of the Year. In 2014, again, so we're looking at what, one, two, three, four in 2014 alone. And I've told you about the Nigeria Entertainment Awards, the Ghana Music Awards, the Buzz Awards, and then the Best New Entertainer. Uh, awards. He got the Dance Hall Artist of the Year. This was also in 2014. Fast forward to 2015 and there was the GN Bank Awards which uh, Shatawali became People's Choice Male Musician uh, winner. Again in 2015 he was at the Afrima Awards as Dance Hall Artist of the Year. 2016 he was the Ghana, he was the Reggae Dance Hall Artist of the Year for Ghana Music Awards UK 
and in 2017 he was artist of the year for Ghana Music Awards UK. In 2018 he was best entertainer at the Ghana Entertainment Awards United States of America and this year he won the Hip Highlight Song of the Year at the Ghana Music Awards. This is Shatawale. So in 2013 he had won award. In 2014 he had five he had four awards in 2014 and in 2015 he had two awards. 2016 he had one 2017 one 2018 one and 2019 one if you want to put all together we're looking about uh, seven eight nine ten about 11 awards for him so far let's move on from shata wale let's talk about stone boy now stone boy won the artist of the year at the ghana music awards in 2015 in 2015 again he was uh, he was at the he was the best international act in 2015, again, he had he had he was the best reggae dancehall video uh, at the All Africa Music Awards. That's a Freema. In 2016, MTN Foresight Music Awards vid Video Awards. 2016, uh, he was the most promising act in the International Reggae and World Music Awards. In 2016, um, Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year at the Ghana Music Awards. 2017, Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year, Ghana Music Awards again. 2018, Afrima Award is the Best Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year. 2018, Ghana Music Awards, Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year. 2019, Ghana Music Awards, Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year. And this is what uh, the point that Stoneboy tried to make at the point that he was announced as a winner for that category. So he just gesticulated with his fingers to show that this is the fifth time he has won that award uh, and it looked like um it's 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 been um it's been quite he's been quite consistent with winning this particular award so he won it in 2016 2017 2018 again in 2018 uh 2018 for the ghana music awards and then afrima and then 2019 he won again Basically, 10 awards there for Stone Boy. So these are the two men we were talking about, Stone Boy and Shatawali. As we speak, though, they are being subjected to police questioning or, if you like, interrogation um, regarding what happened on Saturday night. Well, let me take you through some statements that have come through from the camps of these two gentlemen. Stone Boy released a statement apologizing for, this action, for his action. Uh, details of the uh, the statement uh, these I would like to extend my sincerest apologies and deepest regret for the part my conduct uh, played at what should have been the biggest celebration of Ghanaian music last night in seeking to entertain Ghanaians I have been the victim of incessant vilification and physical attacks in recent times my own dear wife has in the past suffered a knife attack. He continues to say that his wife suffered that attack at a concert, an attack that had been meant for him, uh, that is uh, Stone Boy, and which resulted in her, which is the wife, being rushed to a hospital. This for me has been quite alarming with regards to my security. Stoneboy goes on to say such unfortunate incidents have clearly had an impact on the sense of alertness of my entire team and I. Violence can easily result in trauma, especially violence against those closest to us. Stoneboy is a very respectful and well-mannered musician, he says, highly spoken of amongst his equals and the masses both locally and internationally. Due to the high level of respect I show to all and high levels of comportment coupled with hard work. I have been, he goes, to, he goes on, I have been going through difficult times despite the gains my team and I have made musically in raising high the flag of Ghana and also at the 20th Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. I however accept that no matter the provocation, there must be an attempt to remain calm. I am taking remedial measures to ensure that there will never be a repetition of such actions. These include improving the security measures within my team.
Stoneboy statement continues to say that these immediate actions are to ensure that such acts do not recur, nor in any way affect my person or my profession. It is my ardent hope that the show will be remembered for the showcase and appreciation of talent and not the few minutes of regretful haywire. I will continue working with Charterhouse and hope this won't in any way affect my relationship with them. To Vodafone Ghana, my sincerest apologies to you for bringing your brand to a low moment like this. As artists, we appreciate what you invest and continue to invest in our talent. We hope you will continue to support Ghanaian music. And he goes on, he says to all Ghanaians, let us come together in unity and rise above fueling needless rivalries. I urge all fans to keep calm and desist from all forms of violence. The stone boy, you know, always comes in peace, and I'll always advocate for peace. So those are details of a statement brought in by Stone Boy and Stone Boy's camp. What is Vodafone saying, of course, and in, in Stone Boy's apology, he also mentions Vodafone. Well, Vodafone has also issued a statement, and here is how it goes. We refer to the unfortunate incident that occurred during this year's edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards VGMA on May 19, 2019, we wish to state as follows, and it goes on. One, the scuffle on stage during the VGMA is regrettable. However, we acknowledge that a large number of players in the industry do not subscribe to such conduct. Vodafone, as a responsible organization, is against all acts of violence and such conduct, no matter the circumstances. We will support any review process of the incident to ensure that our commitment to recognize and celebrate achievement and successes in the music industry is not compromised. For now, our passion for music and for the industry remains solid. We look forward to an exciting future for the industry. The future is exciting already, and that is uh, C2 General. Is, that's how it signs off, and that is a statement um, by... Vodafone, Ghana. So you've heard from Shatawale's father. You've had, had, the, about, uh, had the details of the statement uh, by uh, Stone Boy. You've also heard from Vodafone. Shortly, we'll take you to the Accra Region Police Headquarters for an update on the police investigation so far. Right now, though, you need to listen to another key player in this incident, Chatter House. The CEO, Teresa Awade, Ayowade, I beg your pardon, has been speaking to us. All the security plottings and arrangements and measures had been put in place. And so we were quite um, taken off guard with this new development as it um, occurred. Mm. There was some screening done, but obviously what um, showed um, us is that there was a clear breach mm. in the arrangements that were made. And um, these, were, these are things that we will need to um, review and put more stringent measures in place working closely with security authorities. Mm. Stoneboy was saying that he was receiving threats and all that. That did not that was not brought to our notice okay. as organizers. Okay. So if that had been formally presented to us as an I'm feeling insecure or I'm feeling um threatened I'm because I'm facing threats, I need you to provide extra security or be cognizant of this situation so you can prepare, then we would have made th those adequate measures and had that kind of briefing session with the police that, okay, this is what we need from you, but this is a, a threat that we need to look at. Okay. But we didn't, we were not mm. aware of um, some of these things, except what we see in social media all the time as in the, the so-called beef. Okay. Yeah, but if um, Stoneboy felt that threatened, he did not make it um, known no, to us no. as the organizers, because we would have made, put in extra measures to ensure that um, that threat was nullified, mm. but we were not made aware. So maybe that's what he means by the police were not aware of um, some of these things, oh, which right. we were also um, caught on the blind side. Mm.
So that is CEO of Charter House uh, speaking earlier to Benis Abu Beidou. We'll be having a conversation when I return from this break. We'll also be connecting with Enes Menu, who is at the Accra Region Police Headquarters for us at the moment. So we get an update on what is happening. But uh, Socrates Safwas, you know, is the director of Creative Arts. He's also responsible for programs and projects at the National uh, Commission on Culture. You'll be joining me in the studio. So we take the conversation forward. You don't want to miss that conversation. Do stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us as always. I have in the studio, like I indicated uh, before I went on the break, that uh, I'll be talking to Socrates Safo. He is the director of creative arts, responsible for programs and projects at the National Commission on Culture, which is a part of the Creative Arts Ministry. Mr. Safo, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. But let me quickly cross over to Ernest Menu. He's joining us live from the police station at the Accra Police Headquarters. Uh, on phone. Hello, hello, Ernest. Hi, Gifty. What's the latest? Yes, uh, so here at the Accra Region Police, um, we have Stoneboy and Shatawale still in custody. Um, of course, Shatawale is here with his father, his management, as well as some fans. Uh, the police are trying to get them, you know, to move away, but they wouldn't. But I must say that uh, the numbers are going down since I came here. I met uh, more than 20 people, but I can say that they are less than 10 as we speak now. I don't know if it's because of the rain or it's just as a result of police engagement. Uh, Stoneboy is also here. He is here with his lawyers. Uh, information we are picking up is that uh, earlier today, just before this afternoon, he was driven home. And, you know, the aim was to retrieve the, the, the gun which he pulled at the event on Saturday mm. because that's a crucial part of the investigation uh, that is ongoing. Right. Uh, but they've done that and they've returned to the police station. If you say they've done it. that, you mean that they've retrieved this uh, gun and they brought it to the police station? Well, well, I can't be sure if it's been retrieved, but what I'm saying is that they went home, he was mm -hmm. taken to his home, and he has been driven back to the police station. Okay. As to whether they were able to retrieve the gun or not, I cannot confirm. At the um, moment. Uh, but we're still trying to get information on that. Uh, the police has not spoken to us officially. This is so information we are picking from sources here at, at, at the police, you know, at, uh, region headquarters. And so that is the latest on, on, mm. on the investigations ongoing here. They have not been charged yet. Again, Gifty, they have not been charged. Uh, and it's not clear if they'll be granted bail because, you know, the 48-hour uh, period that the police has to, you know, do its investigations and press charges if they want, it's not due. We understand that will be due tomorrow. And so it is still not clear if they'll be granted bail. However, I spoke to A Plus, who is uh, a, a close associate of, um, or an associate of, of Shatawale. He said he's been with him since yesterday when he was invited and eventually detained. Um, he, first of all, confirmed to me that yes, Shatawale did not spend the night at the personal police station as it was announced. Um, he cannot tell why he just he leaves that to the police. However, uh, information that I have picked up also suggests that he was moved from there to the uh, ministry's police station. And again, the, the source tells me it's because of security reasons. Remember that Shata announced on his Twitter that he was going to spend the night there and invited his fans to come over and, and sing yeah. and sort of hold a vigil. And so that is information. Again, um, um, uh, uh, A-plus tells me that he is optimistic that they will be granted bail today because the lawyers are working hard at that. But the police have not confirmed, you know, whether that is possible or even if they have pressed charges or not. Uh, Enes Menu, thank you very much for that detailed information there. We'll be crossing over momentarily to you as and when you have any further development on that story. Thank you. So that is Enes Menu, the reporter here at Joy News at the Accra Region Police um, joining us with some details. The two are still in custody. Let's begin this conversation right now. Mr. Safa, once again, thank you. How is the ministry uh, and the commission that you work for that is supposed to be uh, interested in the creative art industry, taking everything that has happened within, what, less than 72 hours? Yeah, uh, let me say this is unfortunate. Um, I have not also uh, 
um, at a brief from my ministry, minister. So um, let's hold that part of the um, conversation okay. until I meet my minister. Okay. Oh, so how about the commission? How is the commission taking this? Yes, we've not because it's Monday, early days yet. Um, okay. I haven't been like um, stable. I have been running around trying to sort things out for both artists behind the scenes okay yeah so, so. What, what exactly have you been doing to sort things out for the for, for the both of them well let's leave that oh i mean we can leave that but we can also talk about something well, you see in moments like this the fans especially some of them if you don't manage them well can go overboard with mm. certain yeah so actions, actions. so let's so you want to leave that out for now? Yeah. D Let's be strategic with information, please. Mm. And that is what I'm trying. I'm yeah, yeah, trying to do. Yeah. It, well, it, people will say that we have looked on and allowed this to fester, yeah. and we're dealing with something that we should have dealt with a long time ago. Yes. I'll come to that momentarily. But do, would you say that you saw this coming? Did you see this coming? You have been an industry watcher for a very long time. Yes. Did you see it coming? Yes. You saw it coming? Yeah. At what point did you see it coming? At a point, this was... Years ago, when um, as a filmmaker, we start introducing guns in our films. Okay. Yes. Years gone by, if somebody wants to take a revenge, he will call on the gods, Paul Libation, mm. and the ghost will come and take mm. revenge. This is what we were doing, and this is what how our ancestors were um, like taking revenge until we start introducing guns into our films. But we've, we've had guns in our films for a very long time and yes, nobody has and gone on stage and it starts tripping into the society. That's you how you see this? Yes, that's how I, uh, yeah. So it, beca it, be it became something like fashion to, for, for somebody to hold gun, uh, display guns in movies, and then people also start picking it up. Hmm. Uh, so you did. What, what, so what you saw is that you you saw it coming. As in, yes. you saw that there will be a point yeah. where people in the creative arts industry. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. You see that you saw that there will be a point where people in the creative arts industry will begin to arm themselves because of what? Not creative arts industry. The youth, especially. Well, um, this themselves. is not just about the creative industry. Hmm. This is about the youth. But this, these are young people who a lot of other young people look up to. Yes. These are people who are supposed to live lives that, are, uh, that others will emulate. Yeah. So yeah. they know that they are to be held to higher standards. Exactly. So if anybody will do anything, it shouldn't be them. That's what, what, what I'm wondering, whether, whether or not you but saw we, we, we've portrayed Yes, because we've portrayed people with guns as people with power. Leaders who display guns. Um, are always revered and feared, and that is what happened. That's what Stoneboy did. How well do you know Stoneboy? Well, not that well as being close as I know Shatter. I okay. am very so close with So you know Shatter. a lot yeah. more about Shatter Wale than you know yeah. about Stoneboy. So Stoneboy yeah. has released a statement which I've shared already with our viewers. In that statement, he talks about how he has come... There, has, there have been a lot of close calls on his life. Mm -hmm. he, there's been attacks in which he says his, his wife was attacked... Uh, with a knife, he, he, his wife had to be rushed to the hospital. He talks about he, he talks about the, the things that he has been through, the trauma that has sub that the things mm. he's been through has subjected mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. to, and so he couldn't go there without that arm. Um. Well, that's what he's saying, and I, I believe him. That's what he's saying. So I can't take anything away from him, but I think it's unfortunate um, when you hold arms or you, 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 you protect yourself with arms when there are security men on the grounds. I think that is... And for Shatter also going there, please, I, I think I'll talk about also, Shatter momentarily. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about Stone Boy because he was a guy with an arm. But I'll come back to you, Mr. Safo. DJ Black uh, is with us here at, at Multimedia. He's, also, he's an experienced DJ. He's handled majority of these award events, mm -hmm. both in Ghana and on the international scene. He actually was in charge of the turntables when the uh, Saturday's incident happened. DJ Black, thanks for, your, thanks for your time this afternoon. Hello. Hi. So I'm just, uh, I've just been asking uh, Mr. Safo here whether or not he saw this coming. Did you see this coming? 
When you say did I see this coming, what exactly did you Did you mean? see the disruption of the show coming in that someone had to bring out an, uh, uh, bring out a gun and someone apparently wanted to mount the stage when he didn't want to? Are you asking me if I answer to this? Being, a, in the, being an industry watcher, being a part of this industry for a very long time, and I'm talking about the rivalry and the extent to which it has evolved. Did you see the incident on Saturday coming? No. You didn't. Could you yes, did. to describe to us or share with us what was going through your mind at the time this happened? To protect myself and my equipment. Th that, was, that was what went through your mind then? Yes. So what did you do? Uh, exactly what I did. I just made sure that my equipment were in uh, position because I believe that it would be over and the show would continue. So I just made sure that I had myself protected and my equipment. Mm. Following after that, a lot of people, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of discussions, a lot of analysis. The two of them are in custody at the moment. You were, you were part of the organization of this program, correct? No. You weren't? Yes. How are you taking this as an industry player? So it's kind of unfortunate this happened, but I just hope that, um, I mean, it's already happened, and I, I just hope that all the things are going to run all fast. Your line is a little bit muffled. I don't know if you'll have to re, uh, reposition. And let me try this Can once again. Can you hear again. me now? I do hear you, but it's still a bit muffled. Can you hear me clear? Mm, let's try this again. You were just telling me how unfortunate you think this, the, situ the incident has been. Yes, I think it's rather unfortunate that something like that had to happen. But I hope that uh, lessons will be learned. It has already happened, and I, and I just hope that lessons will be learned by all parties, and such a thing will not happen again. Such a thing will not happen again. Lots of people have linked this to how this seeming rivalry between these two people, uh, or, and, and sometimes between others in the music industry, has been allowed to degenerate. Do you think that? where we can deal with it and how? I think, first of all, I think rivalry in music is natural. It happens everywhere. Um, it, and just like I said, it's, it's up to everybody to take part and take an interest in what happens in, in the industry to make sure that we do things well and we improve on whatever we do. I, it's rather unfortunate. I can't really hear you. We may have to call you back and so that we can get a better um, sound on that one. DJ Black, thanks again, once again, but hopefully we'll get you back so we can talk about this a bit further. DJ Black there. Uh, um, Daddy Bosco also joins me uh, on the line. He's with Musica, uh, Musica. Daddy Bosco, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you very much. How are you taking what happened over the weekend? Oh, it's a day of shame for Ghana music. I mean, 20 years on after um, showcasing the best the nation has to offer, celebrating the 20th anniversary of what is undoubtedly the flagship program on the Ghanaian music landscape. It's not the way you if I heard you well, this is a day of shame, you call it, for the music industry and for the country as a whole. Yeah. I will, I've just been asking my two guests. I have here with me Sir Chris Safo, and I've also spoken to DJ Black about whether or not they saw this coming. And I keep asking this question about seeing it coming because we do that a lot in this country. Sometimes the signs are clear to us where we're heading towards, but we barely do anything about it until it actually happens. I'm asking this also because I want to find out how we can deal with this rivalry which is becoming violent in the music industry. Did you see it coming? Okay, uh, you see of a truth. For people like us who have been watching the industry for close on four decades, not only in Ghana, but globally, globally, um, if you follow dancehall music in Jamaica, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you will know of the likes of Ninja Man. You will know of the likes of Vibe Cartel and many others. To the extent that it was decided that no more gun lyrics in Jamaica. Okay. Unfortunately, we've adopted the dancehall culture, hook, line, and sinker with all the excesses it comes with. 
And that, for me, is cause for worry. Okay. Because one would have expected that, yes, let's, let's appreciate the finery of dancehall music, but leave out the violence, leave out the thuggery, leave out the hooliganism, mm -hmm. and leave out what in Jamaica we call the root boyism. We want no root boys here in Ghana. We want no root boys here in Ghana, but we seem to have, like you said, we've copied the culture, we're, we're, and people love dancehall music. We can't, we can't take that away from people. People love dancehall music, so they follow it. And they follow, especially these two individuals who are icons to people, if you like, even idols to people. But we've seen what has happened with this in Jamaica, as you're saying. I have with me here uh, someone who is representing the National Commission on Culture. Perhaps this is a time where we can begin to put our thoughts and ideas together as to how we deal with this. How do we deal with this from your perspective? Okay, for me, this is a wake-up call that we need a round table of all the leading practitioners on the scene and also their managers. And we need to get them to sign an undertaking that we will shun violence in all its forms, both verbally, physically, emotionally, and once we sign that undertaking, we ensure that no one flout or flout that undertaking. You see, for far too long, we've been turning a blind eye to excesses and, and certain behavior that we shouldn't um, encourage. Mm. So I'm glad you say there's somebody from the National Commission on Culture and Music as, a, as an institution. We're actually... Um, working on getting the ministry involved in this whole discourse. Because, you see, for this conversation to, to have any impact, it will take state intervention. Mm. Yes, where we have a table. That okay, so hang on for me, Daddy Bosco. I'm going to bring Secretaries into this conversation once again. Secretaries, you've heard what uh, music, you know, that's music, and I believe that you've been working with them. Yeah. What are the concrete steps we can begin to take? Serious concrete steps. I mean, this is something that connected, a lot of people are connected to if we are not going to play with it like we've played with other issues in Ghana. What are the concrete steps at the national level you believe we can take? Well, um, like you said, we need controls, regulations. Okay. Um, not to regulate what people, creativity, but what you put in. That's where I started by giving you the movie example mm. where we start displaying guns mm. and how it's creeped into the society. Mm. This is the same thing happening to, um, how do you call it, music. The music industry. Because there was nothing like control. Everybody was doing what he or she, she feels that, oh, okay, this is what I feel like doing today. Mm. And there is no control. So if my brother from the musical, um, music industry is saying this, come on. So how, where do we start? Where, where do we well, start? This is music. He, he talks yeah. about getting the managers of these artists yeah. to uh, yeah. sign an undertaking. Yeah. But what will Not we... just an undertaking. Okay. We have to put the regulations there. Okay. And so, say that, okay, henceforth, this is what uh -huh. you do and you don't do. So henceforth, what are the specifics we are looking at? He talks about how in Jamaica, for example, they looked at uh, having non-gun lyrics mm -hmm. in, the, in mm -hmm. the songs that the mm -hmm. people compose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any specifics that we can talk about here in Ghana? Well, sitting here, I can't give you. Let's meet and then we can take a decision from there. Okay. But if you, for me, I think the first thing we need to do is the round table discussion. Round table discussion. Yes. Between yes. among who and who and who? Well, the industry players. This is not just about music. Let's look at creative arts in general. Because if you fix music, music is, uh, film is there. If you leave film, we have photography, you can get people sh wearing guns and showing uh, um, some but, superstars. But, but again, that's like a long-term no. thing, wouldn't you say? Because at the moment, we know what this situation When he came yeah. here, I asked you a, first, a very yeah. first question. Yeah. You could not answer that question because you are trying to manage this. Yes followers of these people usually yeah. that's where the problem comes from isn't mm -hmm. it yes. so why don't we tackle this one that has become a big a problem yeah. and from there we take the solution and try and apply it elsewhere well for me for me i feel that 
when we meet on a round table, then we can have concrete decisions. Okay. Do you understand? Then coming out with an ad hoc one that maybe I alone will take a decision and then to what end? Okay. I'm not the most... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, mm. Danny Bosco, I'm going to come back to you again. And you've heard me speak to Sir Chris. Sir Chris is on the National Commission on Culture, and he's in charge of programs and projects. We're, we're talking about how to deal with this problem going forward. You have given some specifics about how it's done in Jamaica, for example, how they um, encourage non-gun non, uh, non lyrics, like you're saying. Is it an encouragement they give to the people, or is it a strict rule that the, uh, the dancehall artists must comply with? What it is is... Daddy um, Bosco. Yeah, I'm saying a certain laissez-faire attitude will not get us where we want to go. And then, like I indicated, this is a wake-up call. We don't want what happened in Jamaica where somebody killed somebody mm. before we all start running um, around like headless chicken. What we need to do now is nip this thing in the bud and confront it head on. We know who the leading players in the space are. Okay. Let's call them, sit them around the table, and get them to sign undertaking. Okay. Actually, we will not do these things. We will not be violent. We will not be violent in our language, in our, what you call it, in our music, mm. in whatever form. And then we commit to it. That, for me, is the way to go. So that is one thing. But when you take a statement by Stoneboy after this incident, in which statement he says that he has been traumatized by several attempts on his life. Hello? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Do, do you hear me, Daddy Bosco? Yeah. Okay. So that we can do, you can let them sign the undertaking to say we will not be violent, etc. But we're looking at a situation like Stone Boy's case, in which after the after the incident, he received we released a statement. In that statement, he talks about the trauma he has suffered because of incessant attacks on his life, and his wife has come close calls uh, with one of these incidents, and his uh, when she was attacked by a, 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 a knife wielding gentleman. He says he's been traumatized, and based on that, he had to come prepared. Um, you see, that is why I'm saying this is not um, a, what you call it, a quick fix situation. This thing has been festering for a long time. So it's a whole process, a whole process of uh, what you call it, mediation and reconciliation, mm. where you take all the affected parties, all the parties involved, and, you know, thank God there are people who have um, the appropriate skills in, in arbitration and conflict resolution in the country. So we need to address this for what it is. People have been traumatized. People feel a certain way. There's a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of blues bottled up in people. So you need to take them through the whole process mm. so that people can air their grievances, and then appropriate measures okay. are taken, all with the end of resolving this issue comprehensively. That is the roundtable you're calling for, so that people will be allowed to air their grievances, then the leaders will, brought, will be brought together to sign an undertaking, and then you think we're good to go from there? Yeah, it's a whole process, and we have to embark on it. Dad Bosco, before I let you go, I'd like for you to share with us some of the more examples from Jamaica. Uh, I know that, you know, Jamaica can be a little crazy uh, based on the, the stories I've heard from Jamaica and the stories we've read online as far as dance hall and the players, uh, the way they behave and the things that have happened is concerned. But how have they been able to deal with it? Yeah, what it is is, you see, that is how come... You, okay, let me tell you about Vice Cartel. Vice Cartel, without a doubt, is one of the biggest... Name. There, there are lots of songs we dance in Ghana. We never even knew it was Vice Cartel. You know, he's, he's without a doubt one of the biggest names. And Vice Cartel became virtually a thing god to the extent that Vice actually murdered somebody, chopped the person into pieces. Bur oh, well, I should say alleged. Oh, well, since he's been jailed for it, um, that's what the court says. And the person was buried in a yard. Years later, the story came out. 
today is in jail. Okay. And I'm saying that these are some of the very extreme examples of artists who 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 was the word of rivalry, if you like, in the industry, and how far it can so, go. Vice cartel, vice cartel shooting that party. It was the party was his friend. So it's not like killing his rival. Mm. So, so essentially what you're saying is that if we allow this to fester any further, we are headed towards a very um, dangerous place where you could even see people turn on their own friends like happened in Jamaica. I mean, you can't, you can't tell where it's going to end. But the, 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 the thing is that this is a worrying trend that right. has to be contained. Okay. <laughs> Daddy Bosco, I say a very big thanks to you for your time this afternoon. Very insightful uh, additions you've you've brought to the conversation. Daddy Bosco, there is with music. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Bosco, yeah. Bosco left out uh, the East Coast West Coast. East Coast yeah. West. I was going I was yeah. going to draw his attention uh, to it somehow, but yeah. yes, that's also part of the yes. problem. You see, uh, rivalry or competition. I would say competition mm. has been in the music industry since the days of um, David. Everybody is the <laughs> best musician we know. Mm. Yeah, um, it's also good for business, but if you don't manage it well, mm -hmm. that is where it degenerates into what we are seeing today. So we've how seen do it we in Ghana. It? We have um, how do you call him? Um, examples. Examples. We have Samini and uh, one other artist. It mm. generate into something Chicago yes. and XDO. Oh, right. We have all these artists. But, but that, that didn't past. degenerate this much. I mean, it was that limited to good. doing this we music. Didn't do you did in we your didn't music, do anything someone. about it by then. But, but you said it's good for business. So Some, as long as people can not manage can compose well, themselves. Yes. If we don't manage it well, when, where leaders look on. When I was running the show in the movie industry, mm. that was where, let me see, I instilled discipline into the movie industry where artists cannot misbehave because it got to a point where artists start misbehaving, disrespecting producers. Mm. And I said, hey, no, we need to stop. And it took a day, one Wednesday, mm. put a stop to it. So Daddy Bosco has a proposal. He thinks that there should be a round table, like you also agreed to, yeah. that all these people will come together. You, you put together the controls. Okay, you can do this, you can do this, yeah. you can do this. You get the managers to sign an undertaking. Where can we, when can we start this? Yesterday, if you ask me, we need to do this long ago, but... We couldn't uh, do it yesterday, which yes, is why we I are will, where we are. I will are. meet my minister first, hmm. have a discussion with my minister, then we move on. But for these controls, strategically, let's leave the artists out and let's control the movers and shakers of the industry, those who control the radio stations, event organizers, um, the DJs. Hmm. When we get them, we rally around them and they buy into whatever we do, the artists are nothing. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. When we control these people, pops, where these songs are being played, the DJs there, when we get them, we get the radio stations, event organizers, mm. and all that. When they don't call you, they put a, a sanction on you. But the, at, the, at the end mm. of the day, look at what happened yesterday. Right after the incident, Shatawale released a song. And the people, I mean, and social media is gone off, is, is, is taking off. People are spreading it, it's being sent to every platform you're on, you're seeing it. So mm -hmm. it's not just about the people who uh, play it on radio, there's social media as well. So if you don't control it at the point of the Why artist, are they releasing these songs? Yeah, if you don't control it at the point of the artist... Why are they releasing these songs? They'll go to their room, they feel aggrieved, they'll do the song and they put it on social mm -hmm. media. Because they will get event organizers to call them and pay them big money for shows. Because but that the music is will still go. And the lyrics in the music the will The music go. goes... But he's not getting business. What happens? If he, nobody's calling Shatawale or Stoneboy for shows, mm. what happens? You think that will end it? What yeah. are your expectations of the police investigation so far? Well, so far, so good. I hope and pray they will keep the momentum and uh, make sure that they follow the law to the letter. Let's see the end of this, wherever it may be. Once you are charged, we, we want to see arbitration or whatever in court. That is what I'm looking for. That's your um, expectation. You yes. want you want prosecution. You want this matter to go to court. You yes. want it to fo you want it to follow to its logical conclusion. Exactly. Don't let us. The moment we try treating them with some kids' gloves, please, we fuel it. Okay. The more the uh, followers will uh, misbehave. Misbe misbehave. They are doing so already. That's why I I, I said since morning I have mm. been on phone. No, just yesterday. 
I asked about your relationship with Stoneboy. That it, it doesn't you don't seem to have a relationship with him, but you do have a relationship with. Uh, Not that I don't. I'm cool uh, with Stoneboy. But you are much yeah. closer to yes. Shatawale. Yeah. His action on Saturday. That was that that action is what has brought us here today. Do you yeah. agree? Yes. Why do you think he did that? A lot of people have said he was going. Some people like there have been theories. Some say he was going to congratulate him, but everybody says, "Look, we're not kids. You can you can't go the way you did. Besides, you've you've not even been asked to come. First of all, so why do you even do that in the first place? I was in there. I was on UT uh, Peace FM running commentary. If I were to be around, I would have advised him not to go on stage. This is not the first time he's been on stage to congratulate um, Stone Boy. But I will advise him, if I were to be there, I will say, no, it's wrong. Do you think you nobody can... advised him then? I wasn't there. I don't know who Knowing took that who decision. who he is, would he have taken any advice at the time if he was given You see, him? I think people see Shatter to be some kind of rowdy no, person. I don't know him very well. Yeah, I but know I'm him. saying, yes, I'm yes. coming from that perspective, yeah. that knowing who he is, mm -hmm. as you know. He's human. Do you think he would have listened to anybody? He's human, depending on how he feels at the, uh, at the moment. He's human. Depending on how he feels at the moment? Yes. I wasn't there, he was, so... He was, he was, he was uh, obviously not, very, not a very happy person. We saw the way he left. Happy? He wasn't a happy person. Well, I don't know what transpired there. Mm. Whatever happened, I wasn't directing affairs. I wasn't advising, and I can't tell. What well, I know is that what happened there is not acceptable. And that if you it's were so, there... It's so shameful. Let's condemn it. And that if you were there, you would have advised him to stop. If yeah. you were there, you'd have advised him to stop, and yeah. he probably would have listened to you. Yeah. He would have listened to you. Yeah. You're 100% sure of that? That one I know for sure. Because okay. I do, sometimes there are issues, things have happened that I've talked to him, and then... He's he listened say, yeah, to you. that one, yeah. So who are these gentlemen? So Chris is still here with me in the studio. He's Director of Creative Arts at the National Commission on Culture. He's responsible for programs and projects. We're talking about these two people and what happened over the weekend. We'll be wrapping up this conversation soon, but let's get to know who these two artists are and what has brought them to this point of extreme rivalry. Charles Niyama, popularly known as Chatawali and Livingston Eche, also known as Stoneboy, have all identified themselves as fighters of the music industry. They command large followers, mainly the youth. Just two years ago, Chatawali honored an invitation from the president where he spoke to the president about his vision for the industry. Well, you know, the former's sake, but to teach the youth what music entails, because most of them see it like fun. And we want them to realize it as business, you know, for them to really grow up with it, because there's been so much talk said and the government doesn't support, but I believe we don't help ourselves. And people like me and Stoneboy have sat down to think about it, how we can really grow and teach them. What's the message? Yeah, yeah so it's message. We'll, we'll be happy if, like... Um, I'll speak to the yeah. woman. I'll speak to Catherine Afeko. Stoneboy was also at the Jubilee House last year to interact with the president. So I have to definitely make sure I lead the path properly and call on the powers that be to look onto it, at least put an eye to what is happening so that we can all come to a point where we as the sons of the nation can be used for developmental, general developmental agendas. But even though these artists claim to be the saviors of the industry, they have on a lot of occasions done almost the opposite. Let's begin with Shatawali. Last year, Shatawali was invited by the police for indiscriminately firing warning shots. He came back into the music scenes in 2013 as Shatawali from the previous bandana. After Kaki was announced winner of the Reggae Dance Hall Song of the Year, Shatawale released a song, Letter to Chatterhouse, to further jab the event's outfit. Well, that same year, he apologized. I This time, Chatter House wasn't going to take it lightly to sue the musician over defamation. The defamation was over this. Hello, good evening, Ghana people. 
Are they send this thing to Yola? Are they what they or are you what they or are you what Poto are you what or anything? Daddy, daddy, you are in for trouble. He went ahead to subsequently have social media fights with Samini, Kaki, Kwaukese, Yapono, Stone Boy, and recently Sarkodie. Stone Boy, on the other hand, had shown in the past few years through songs and interviews that he and Shata don't like each other. It is said the Stone Boy song with Yapono was targeted at Shatawale. Prepare them be the shito. They be a for as a mu as a pointo. I'm a mabu mabu. Are you my ko yi ko? My love na o kata fio abe chiko. I'm a mabu mabu. Why are you the disrespect? When you forgive respect, hey, disobey you go fall instead. You for the year word and keep in check. We are Zimbabwe on the mass. It therefore came as a surprise when they were both signed by xylophone. The CEO of Xylophone Media, Nana Apia Mensa, noted he was going to reconcile the two. But that did not happen. Their beef continued. The two had a brawl at Champs Bar in 2018 where Stone Boy fired shots. There were no injuries or deaths. The fracas was on, the suckers was on, and I think, listen, one thing I have to say is that, you see, in this country, I think so many people are taking the laws into their own hands. Once again, the two are in the news for all the wrong reasons. The question now is, will this ever end and when? So that's uh, a bit of information for you about these two, their exploits in the music industry and how far it's taken them. Uh, as we speak, they are in the police, uh, they're in police custody. They will be getting an update on that momentarily. But Sir is still here with me. So you talk about how he could have listened to you if you were there, but you weren't there. This is where we are at the moment. You are hopeful that the police will investigate this matter and get to its logical conclusion. Yeah. What sort of effects do you think this will have on the industry? Would it be a good one? Will it be a bad one? For me, something needs to happen for us all to sit up. And I think this is it. Mm. Um, let's put the necessary measures in place and have control over um, the industry. Who helps you now? Prevail. Uh, uh, prevail and uh, let's have decency. To the youth, I will say, you see Shatter that I know, he is an artist, an actor, and a businessman. Mm. Whatever you see him do, he's looking at the, uh, the business, the value, business of value of it. <laughs> that you need to create a certain aura around you to attract. That is his mindset. And he's been preaching this ever since. That look. And I, I am privy to some of the strategies that look. Talk to my, my friends. Let's look at this thing from the business side. Mm. The more rivalry we create, let's meet behind the scenes and plan it well mm. so that we can attract people to our events, charge more. Mm. If event organizers are making more money, then they can pay us more. Then this is business. Then this but is this business. looks like business gone, gone terribly bad. 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 Yes, yeah. it's wrong because it wasn't planned well, these strategies, strategic meetings were not coming on mm. because the followers were fueling yeah. the negative side. They were urging them on, and mm. here we are today. It's just unfortunate. But if it has been planned well, it's good for business. So it's possible that you could plan these rivalries. You yeah. could plan this, you could fuel it you know, with that plan. You could have a strategy to make money off of it. But it looks like... Why do you think people watch wrestling? Mm. Wrestling is scripted. Wrestling is not real. Who wins or who loses? It's not all on script. Mm. But they create it when somebody comes to on, uh, on stage, what he will say, fuel it to make it look like, come on, there's rivalry. Without so, rivalry... Mm. That, that, has not, that has not been well done here. Let's quickly get an update before we wrap up this conversation. Maxwell Agbagba is our man on the ground for us at the Accra Police Headquarters. Hello, Maxwell. What's happening? Well, um, just some minutes ago, about five minutes ago, um, Charles Niyama and some popular Niyama Shatawale was uh, taken uh, out of the Accra Regional Police Headquarters um, in the company of about three police officers. Uh, well, they passed um, right in front of one of the officers, and then they put him in the police vehicle uh, with tinted glasses, and then drove off uh, from the Accra Regional uh, Police Headquarters to an unknown location, I should say. Um, as it stands now, we are yet to get information on exactly where 
um, he has been taken to. But we know um, that Stone Boy is also here, still here, at Accra Regional Police Headquarters. He's in one of the offices here at the Regional Headquarters, and we're waiting uh, for official briefing from police. That is not um, happening uh, anytime soon, I'm told. But I'm still waiting here. Um, information that we have indicated that um, some about two hours ago, um, some boy in the company of some police officers actually went to his residence. And this is uh, unconfirmed reports and some information we are picking from our sources um, on the ground here. And we are told um, that the gun that he was seen with, uh, I mean, was, has been retrieved from him. And uh, let me say that this is unconfirmed. Um, but this is not an here, official report. Your, uh, information not, you're getting from the police. Not, exactly. But information you're picking up indicates that this, source, the gun that we source, saw yeah. being brandished on Saturday has been retrieved. Exactly. Okay. That's what we're getting from a source. Hopefully yes. we'll be, we'll be conf getting confirmation exactly. from the police. Exactly, at the Regional Police um, mm. Headquarters. Uh, but this is not um, official uh, from the Ghana Police Service. Uh, mm. It's from a source here mm. at the Police Service, giving us that information. Okay. Um, so as it stands right now, we have um, some supporters of Shatawale and Stoboy you know, standing outside. They are not allowed to actually come inside. Mm. And um, the gate here at the current Police Headquarters is closed. So once in a I'm while, curious, a Maxwell, to find yeah. out what the what the relationship has been between the two supporters, uh, the supporters of the two people who are at the police headquarters. What, what, well, what, it, it has been um, very calm. Um, they, they have not been allowed inside. Yeah, they are not able to come inside because the gates are closed. No, among uh, themselves, among themselves, how has the interaction? Do they talk to each other? Do they, you know, uh, threaten each other? How, what has what has been the situation? Describe to us a bit. Well, from what we've seen here, um, it's more of, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of calm. You, you see some interaction, you know, ongoing, um, one or two people just standing and having discussions. But it is actually difficult um, to point out, like, who really is a Shatawali fan and who is a Stoneboy you know, uh, fan. It's really difficult to distinguish, you know, um, uh, um, at this point. But from what I can see, all of them um, are calm, standing outside. And uh, once in a while, when you have a vehicle, you know, moving outside, a vehicle with tinted glasses, you okay. find, you know, the people standing outside, you know, screaming. Some of them, uh, you know, uh, thinking that, okay, it's a while or a person who could be, you know, stop war. Surprisingly, what happened, uh, you know, was that, ironically, what happened was that when Shatawali was being driven out because uh, the glasses were so dark, they couldn't see that he was the one who was in that vehicle. So he didn't hear any screaming, you know, um, from them. Okay. So as it stands right now, they're taking him to a known location. We are unable to tell where they're taking him to. That some boy, um, mm -hmm. we understand, is still here. Um, at the car reach now, please. Maxwell, thank you for that information. Do, do keep your eyes open for more development. We'll be coming to you momentarily, also in a subsequent bulletin. So could you say that later coming in? Uh, what do you make of it? I saw you sigh. Deeply, the other uh, the, when when I'm Maxwell spoke man, about please. what has happened, I'm, I'm not happy about why, why, this. Why? The, you you mm. want you want the process is, to go is, through and it's bad. going through. No, this is bad. It shouldn't have happened. Well, bad, bad for business or bad for bad for the industry, bad for the image of the country, and bad for the, even the artists themselves. But they it will is. forever live with this. Mm. Yeah, I, I, isn't that a good thing about dealing with this rivalry and the extent to which people can go with it? You see. To some extent, I'll say rivalry is good for business. I made that point earlier. Yeah, yeah. Look, football is there. Barca, Real Madrid. Without it, the Spanish league is nothing. There's, mm. There won't be any business. You go to um, Liverpool, Manchester, whatever. It's there. You need that rivalry to... Um, Create business, but you also but admitted you that this has gone bad. Yes, and so in managing it, the well. police is doing its job. No, we, the industry players or the leaders in the industry, should have managed it well, and the mm. artists themselves should have also managed it well. You understand? Yeah. This is where I'm coming from. That you, without it, I'm telling you, you can't have any successful concerts. People will not come because they like the music. They will listen to it in their cars and homes. Mm. They won't come, but because they know. That, oh, okay, this is my fan. I'm supporting this artist. So I'm going to the concerts. Without this rivalry, and it has been there ever since. Nanam Pedu CK man, there was rivalry. The, the, the Ramblers band and the Black Beats and the rest, they were all, without this rivalry, you can't there do no business. business.
This is why it's important that you spoke about how we can deal with this. The mm. police is doing its job. Hopefully, this will be deterrent enough for any, <coughs> I beg your pardon, any other artists who would want to we go this We have any Kwa coming up, and we are looking on. Yeah, we are looking on. Hopefully, when you they, st they start tra trading insults, and mm. it's coming up. Interesting. Let, let's, let's, well, this is not acceptable. It's a shame. I am ashamed. I am disappointed, and whatever we can do to control this industry, I will say, let's do it. That will be your final words, I guess. Well, or you have any more you want to add? No. I'm disappointed. Well, that's a sad-faced uh, circuit Safo there, uh, talking about how he feels about this situation. He says it's a shame, he's disappointed, he's ashamed, but, well, everybody seems ashamed as well. What will be the end of it? We've just given you an update from the Accra Police Headquarters. Uh, Stoneboy and Shatawale, they're still being handled by the police. We understand that Shatawale has been moved out of the Accra Police Station at the moment. We don't know where they're taking him, but Stoneboy is still there. Unconfirmed report also has it that the, 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 the gun that was, uh, that, that was brandished by Stoneboy on Saturday has been retrieved because the police took him to his home. The belief was that he was going to assist them retrieve that uh, gun. We yet to have official communication on this from the police, and I need to make this clear. But I, this I understand is there the are followers out there. Yes. There but to followers these followers, there. know that these artists, they are businessmen. If you follow them and you do something silly, mm. you pay for you it. Pay for it. You pay for it. They are businessmen. They meet, they chat behind the scenes, mm. they talk. Even though this is yeah. rivalry gone bad. Yeah. They are still business Even people. in the heat of the moment, sometimes mm. you see them trading insults yeah. in the media. Sometimes Behind the scenes, I know they, they do chats. Mm. So, so the please, point, the youth mm. out there, yeah. know, you must understand that if you make the mistake, you will face the law on your own. You have mm. a family. Uh, you are going to put your whole family in trouble. Maybe you may be a student out there. Please focus on your education. Mm. Enjoy their music. But please don't go and fight anybody because of this they can fight their own fight yeah. the point is they can fight their own fight you don't need to fight for them if you do want to fight for them by the way that's a choice you make and you have to be ready for the consequences yeah. because the law will catch up with you just as it has caught up with the two of them mr sasafo thank you so much for coming thank you for having Sokwe me Sofo is a uh, director of creative arts responsible for programs and projects at the national commission on culture so bottom line of this conversation, hopefully there will be a round, round table discussion in which there will be a lot of talk about controlling the industry, about controlling what goes into the lyrics, and about controlling the behavior of the managers of these people so they can control their people.